Roundabout, all around. Why? Why? Why did you do one shoe? So did you find get it straightened out with her? <coughs> no? Even now when you talk to her about it? <laughs> well, I don't know. You tell me. I asked her, I said, why did this? And it's so long. Hi. How do you do? Leah's here. Let's <laughs> walk our way through the digression. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my It's a curious, very curious comparative study. It sure is. Oh, okay. Oh. Very good. Yeah, I was going to say the very same thing. But if you hear it, <laughs> but I think you said it first. Yes. And probably better. <laughs> and probably she said it better. I think so. But I don't have a copy. Do you want to do the sound on? No. I tried to. I just said no. She's very good yeah, at speaking. <laughs> We were down to Two. to the Del Mar Fair in San Diego Sunday. And, uh, Yesterday, Monday. That's why you missed up. You thought we went Monday. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> we put her on a horse. Oh, right. I couldn't get her off horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got the horse not back there now. Pulling into a horseshoe. <laughs> okay. I'd just like to talk through the digression and make a few points. At 172C. Yeah, I was going to throw it away. Well, Socrates, we have leisure at our disposal. Certainly a good way to begin. Hi. 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 That's true. I had one, but I lost it. That's okay, man. No. Please, Michael. Please. Come on, I'll throw it to you. I got another one. Hi. Hi. Let's have it in Adam. Hi. 
She's in a computer, I can tell. She is into it. Fingers, feet, teeth. She's right into them. Into buttons to push. Energetic, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take this. This is what happens when it's heat. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, so what happens with the three hour now? Oh. <laughs> 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 three hour now. Oh, I can see why y'all. Oh, get started. Good time. strikes me now as often before how natural it is that men who have spent much time in philosophical studies would look ridiculous when they appear as speakers in a court of law. So, A is the world of the philosopher. <laughs> So when the philosopher A What is that squeaking? Yeah, it's here. Oh. Technology. Mm. Technology, right. You got copies of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, when the philosopher appears in the no, world okay. of the rhetorician, which he identifies as a court of law, first point, all right, notice what he's doing. He's going crossways first. He appears ridiculous. It's natural. This is natural. So, when that cross is made, when that movement is made into this realm, first point on the side, we collect them now. So we should have a basis for uh, when P is in R, right, appears we did. Right. Agree? First paragraph? Yeah. How do you then? When you compare men who have knocked about from their youth law courts in such places, for those bred in philosophical pursuits, the one set seems to have been trained as slaves, all right? So now do we have now? We have a pure case. R alone, P alone. R is in T. All right, so we're going to have four classes. Paul, I would pose that R is in P when the rhetorician is in the world of philosophy. Then he's going to appear a fool. Yeah. So therefore, the first distinction when they're alone, in terms of their, their past, it's a breeding. It's a breeding. Right, it's a breeding. They end up as slaves. That's the term they use. Agree? Hmm. 
bread, right? When you compare those that have been, uh, excuse me, I got my, my uh, Oh, God. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I'll change it. Okay, one is trained as slaves, one is bred as philosophers. All right. One are free, these are free. Those are enslaved. In what way? All right. So now what is he going to do in this contrast? He's going to unpack these two terms. One is trained, one is bred. Okay, so we need a, a uh, notice how many points he makes in each one. <coughs> So what are we going to start with? The philosophy. Yeah. I, I haven't, uh, haven't done it, but it would be fun to uh, indicate in terms of colors the order. See, this is going to be logical. But the order of the appearance is also interesting, the way he executes it. So let's get a reader. All right, and I'll blow the whistle every once in a while. Pardon me? Do you have it recorded in any of Tell what we can do. We can do this. We have a whole bunch of We can of do it this way, all right? A. All right. This is A. This is B. This is C. The lowercase letters will represent time. The appearance. Oh no, the no, oh no, 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 no. So we need a reader. The way it appears in the text. Apparently we have. Let's see, well, Socrates, we have plenty of time, have we not? <coughs> Apparently we have. Who's going to be Theodore? I'll be Theodore. Okay. Apparently we have, and that makes me think, my friend, as I have often done before, how natural it is that those who have spent a long time in the study of philosophy appear ridiculous when they enter the courts of law as speakers. What do you mean? Those who have knocked about in courts and the like <coughs> from their youth up seem to me when compared with those who have been brought up in philosophy and similar pursuits to be as slaves in breeding compared with freemen. In what way is this the case? In this way. The latter always have that which you just spoke of, leisure, and they talk at their leisure in peace, just as we are now taking up argument after argument, already beginning a third. So can they, if, as in our case, the new one pleases them better than that in which they are engaged, and they do not care at all whether their talk is long or short, if only they attain the truth. Good. The end. Right. Three points. Right. Three points. Watch what he does. Now on the side of the orator, by the rhetorician. <coughs> but the men of the other sort are always in a hurry. For the water clock urges them on. And the other party in the suit does not permit them to talk about anything they please, but stands over them exercising the law's compulsion by reading the brief, from which no deviation is allowed. This is called the affidavit. And their discourse is always about a fellow slave and is addressed to a master who sits there holding some case or other in his hands. And the contest never 
run an indefinite course, but are always directed to the point at issue. And often the race is for the definite defendant's life. <coughs> the order is always talking against time, hurried on by the clock. There's no space to enlarge upon any subject he chooses. But the adversary stands over him, ready to recite a schedule of the points to which he must confine himself. Right? Fixed. Fixed on there. Set of points. Say, look here. Isn't he just, he's got his set, doesn't it? Time and leisure, moves from one argument to another, fixed on a set of points. Right? Here he's directed to truth. Here he's directed only towards one end. All right, look at this. Only at the point of issue, right? Money. Money, <coughs> right? Or for personal Money. concerns or whatever sake. Sometimes even his life. Right? So he's setting, he's consciously setting one against the other, isn't he? He's got these sets and he finds a way of representing their opposites, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. right? So what he's doing is he's got a very clever way of developing his thought. All right, now we deal with, all right? Consequences. <coughs> okay. Okay. As a result of yeah. all this, the speakers become tense and shrewd. They know how to wheedle their masters with words and gain his favor by acts. But in their soul, more, for they have been deprived of growth and straightforwardness and independence by the slavery they have endured from their youth up. For this forces them to do crooked acts by putting a great burden of fear and dangers upon their souls while these are still yet tender. And since they cannot bear this burden with uprightness and truth, they turn forthwith to deceit and to requiting wrong with wrong, so that they become greatly bent and stunted. Consequently, they pass from youth to manhood with no soundness of mind in them, but they think they have become clever and wise. Right, I, I don't have them all here. How many would you say? Come on, let's go back. Let's see. Some are variations. <coughs> Hence he acquires a tense and bitter shrewdness, one. He knows how to flatter his master and earn his good graces. But his mind is narrow and crooked. These are all consequences, aren't they? Mm -hmm. right. An apprenticeship in slavery has dwarfed and twisted his growth and robbed him of his free spirit, driving him into devious ways, threatening him with fears, dangers, which the tenderness of youth could not face with truth and honesty. So turning from the first to lies and the requital of wrong with wrong, Warped and stunted, he passes from youth to manhood with no soundness in him. Turns out in the end, the man of formidable intellect, as he imagines. Right, so, so we're, these are the consequences, right, the effect it has on the soul. Right. Okay, keep going. <coughs> So much for them, Theodorus. Shall we describe those who belong to our band? Or shall we let that go and return to the argument in order to avoid abuse of that freedom and variety of discourse of which we were speaking just now? Theodorus, oh, <laughs> by all means, Socrates, describe them. For I like your saying that we who belong in this band are not the servants of our arguments, but the arguments are, as it were, our servants, and each of them must await our pleasure to be finished, for we have neither judge nor, as the poets have, any spectator set over us to censure and to rule us. Very well. That's quite appropriate, since it is your wish. Okay, what does he have to do now? Sure. What does he have to do now? <coughs> It's going to take the missing part, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Find out our dinner. Right. Describe what those who belong to are. Okay. Do it again. 
<coughs> Very well, that is quite appropriate, since it is your wish. And let us speak of the leaders, for why should anyone talk okay. about the inferior philosophers? His comparison is the many, a class, versus not a class. Yes. The leaders. Right. The leaders. The best. It's a curious comparison. Isn't it? So he, it's, it's, a, it's as if, in order to do it one for one, he would have had to have picked the greatest or the worstest mm -hmm. on the side. It just takes them as a class. Here he takes the leaders. So is he saying then on the, on the many side, that those whole group, they all, there's no, okay. So like, here, here he's taking the leaders and he wants to talk about them. Here he's saying it doesn't make any difference. Take them all. They'll all serve that faith. The leaders, in the first place, from their youth up, remain ignorant of the way to the Agora, do not even know where the courtroom is, or the Senate House, <coughs> or any public place of assembly. As for laws and decrees, they neither hear the debates upon them, and the strivings of political clubs after public offices and meetings and banquets and revelings with chorus girls, it never occurs to them, even in their dreams, to indulge in such things. In the city, is there anyone in the city is of high or low birth, or what evil has been inherited by anyone from his ancestors, male or female? Our matters pay no more attention than to the number of pints in the sea, as the saying is. In all these things, the philosopher does not even know that he does not know, for he does not keep aloof from them for the sake of gaining reputation. But really, it is only his body that has its place and home in the city. His mind, considering all these things petty and of no right. account, disdains them and is borne in all directions, as Pindar says, both below the earth and measuring the surfaces of the earth and above the sky, studying the stars and, inve get and investigating the universal nature of everything that is, each in its entirety never lowering itself to anything close at hand. Okay, back in the paragraph. Another piece. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. <coughs> Alright, let's go back a little bit. Now if you're, I want you to tell me these two terms are very important. Ignorance and knowledge. Let's read it again. Right. Pick out everything that he is ignorant of, everything that he knows. Mm -hmm. oh. On the way to the Agora. Like this is a work on the theory of knowledge, isn't it? So the leaders of this crowd, what, what is it they don't know? Well, they don't know where the rhetoricians hang out. That's what I'm hearing right now. Where the politicians hang out. They don't know what the Senate house is. Their ignorance of their laws and decrees. I mean, public place of assembly. It's like they're away from opinions all together, aren't they? Or what evil or you 
is inherited. So it he's not much on reputation. He's, he doesn't even know that he does not know about his reputation. Well, that'd be interesting. Consider the first part of that. He's not a midwife. He's not a midwife. What? He's not a midwife. That's for sure. He's not a midwife. Can't be a midwife. Can't be a midwife. He doesn't hang out with pregnant people. <laughs> I didn't hear it that either. Socrates know about his fellow citizens? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure he did. Yeah. Yeah. He knew yeah. the point of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew where their fathers were and who their fathers were. Often knows what they've studied. He's always seeking out those who are doing well in the city. Mm -hmm. The youth. Yeah, but he didn't hang around the courtroom very much. No. But no. he did in the Agora. Yeah. Isn't that the marketplace? Mm -hmm. He knew where that was. <laughs> Leader. Um, let's put Stan at once more. Right? Um, let's do two things. Let's look at the two introductions, shall we? At 142 and 143. Stuff. Have you just come to town? Turks in? Turks in? No, some time ago. What is more, I was looking for you in the marketplace. I'm surprised that I could not find you. <laughs> Yeah. Beginning of Socrates. If I took more into interest in the affairs of Cyrene, Theodorus, I might ask you whether news from those parts and whether any of the young men there are devoting themselves to geometry or any other sort of liberal study. But really, I care more for our young men here, and I'm anxious rather to know which of them are thought likely to distinguish themselves. That is what I'm always on the uh, lookout for myself, to the best of my powers. And I make inquiries of anyone in society I see the young men ready to see. Notice the play on Protagoras here. He is not even aware that he knows nothing of all this. For if he holds aloof, it is not for reputation's sake, but because it's really only his body that sojourns, sojourns in the city. While his thought disdaining all such things as worthless takes wings, as Pindar says, <coughs> beyond the sky and beneath the earth, searching the heavens and measuring the plains everywhere seeking the true nature of everything as a whole, never seeking to what lies close at hand. Did we have a play on Pythagoras there? Man is the measure of all things. The philosopher is the measure, isn't he? No. Isn't it? That's right. That's right. 
What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> That's important because, you know, once in a while you leave a trail. Then <laughs> <laughs> I'll wash it out. So the difference, Paul, between this type of Pythagoras is what? Well, there's not Pythagoras. Man is the measure of all things. Oh yes. Right. Yes. What's the difference? Nothing close to half of the philosopher? I didn't hear Nothing close to half of the philosopher was considering the philosopher. Yeah, yeah. What else? Yeah. Uh, universal nature. Mm. Yeah. Read your translation, please. Oh, okay. What's the number? It's 174A. Okay. For he, for he does not keep a loop of gaining repetition. Really, it is only the, his body that has its place at home in the city. His mind, considering all these things petty and of no account, disdains him and is born in all directions. As Pindar says, both below the earth, measuring the surface of the earth, above the sky, studying the stars, <coughs> and investigating the universal nature of everything that is, each in its entirety, never lowering itself. Close at hand. Barbara, what do you say? Well, he's also studying the stars, and he's um, eager to know them in the, what's in the sky, whereas those were not elements in Pythagoras' position. That I yeah, would you read yours? Okay. Well, I take the case of Thales Theodorus. While he was studying... No, 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 no. The same kind of right. From Pindar says. From Pindar says. Yep, 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 yep. What about it? The very top of the page, for He does not keep off freight. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bad word in there. Go ahead. Well, he does not keep him aloof from them for the sake of the gaining reputation, but really it is only his body that has its place and home in the city. His mind, considering all these things petty, and of no account, disdains them and is born in all directions, as Pindar says, both above the earth and measuring the surface of the earth, and above the sky, studying the stars, <coughs> and investigating the universal nature of everything that is, each in its entirety, never lowering itself to anything close at hand. Well, Which word did you think? Universal is in there. No. 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 That's a hole. Yeah, that's a hole. You came back. You came back with a bang. <laughs> That's what happens when you change your pants. There's a place that's missing here that's no. between the earth and the sky. Yeah, earth is missing. Yeah, it's below the earth and it's above the sky. Mm -hmm. Seem like there's something in the middle of it. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, mommy. So, Barbara, what would you do with that translation? Mama, mommy. <coughs> he is—he's measuring the surface of the earth. 
No, we're just saying it says Pindar says both below the earth and measuring the surface of the earth and above the sky. So you say the middle part is measuring the surface? Maybe. Well, no, you're talking about two different things. Stay in the quote. Yeah, just speak to the quote. As Pender said, what's in the quote, you know? Both below the earth and above the sky. Yeah. yeah. That's both, that's two. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you be doing is the question yeah. if you were doing this. So would you have the same Everywhere. What? Measuring. Measuring planes. Yeah, and what would be your purpose? Investigating the universal nature of everything they do. Look here, what would that be? You know, what does it mean to say you're going to be seeking the universal nature of everything that is? You have to know what it is. Sure, right. That's right. It's not just a bag of everything. <coughs> yeah. That's not Darwin's theory of love. I didn't hear that when I was working on this. It was just, you have to know what is. What is. Mm -hmm. Also, it's each hole, you know, of W H O L E. W H O L E. Yeah. Um, if you look at the one just below 174, the first line, see Halu. Hakas to the above on the on the other line, mm -hmm. and it's Hakas to Halu, tone on tone, each each hole of all. Mama, mommy, daddy. Yes, sir. What do you You've got some grapes. Oh, I didn't know you had such grapes. Oh, here. Thank you. I want to get something on my chair. Yeah, that's it. Could that be each bowl, every bean? Yeah. You can get one to run it. Well, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no, there's nothing that's going to get one to run it. There's no ponto. There's no ponto modifying the beans. Why would you want to know it's in the wrong case to go with? Okay, I got a question for you. Right? So here's the problem. Well, it's good. It's good. No. If this is this is the quote we're in, this is one seventy four A. What would you be doing if you were doing that? Second question, right? How does that fit into the question of the nature of knowledge in terms of the positions that are being explored in this dialogue? Is it contained or is it missing? I think it would be missing. So I mean, that's that's it's contained and goes beyond. It's not an object of perception. That sounds like something like uh, Tori or yeah. like a meditation. Maybe the surface of the earth. Are those guys working over there? Hey! Oh, Barbara? Yes. Hi, you want to translate that line, please? Everywhere seeking the true nature, everything as a whole. How would you do it? Well, the, everything's in the up, up above, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you get, well, the, from from his mind, you get dianoia, which is um, thinking uh, all such things small and like nothing, udin, nothing, does not mm -hmm. honor them, mm -hmm. right? But is carried, carried everywhere, according to Pindar. Um, I'm not sure about the below the earth and above the sky. Yeah, that's the next part. Okay. Um, and investigating all, all nature, exclusive, and it's a singular. That's 
investigating. But it's actually, I'm sorry. Um, he's, he, it, it appears that he's investigating in, you know, uh, into the nature of all, right? Rather than inv investigating nature like trees and birds. Sedative, and it's the same object of the verb to investigate. Well, investigating. Ooh. Here, let me run this one. I got it. Here, right here. Say, I want to. I, I want uh -huh. this examined. Right? Nature, um, this is the corn. Uh, this is the no, no, hold on. corn fruit. Corn fruit. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the first okay. hypothesis. Mm. Look here. What we need to do. Yeah, that would get be a, fair. Get that a would committee. Be fair. You'd say this yeah. is cell. Yeah. I like it too. But what happened to everything that is? Well, he's doing what, um, he's doing, he's just doing, everything there would be, be on tone, you know, oh, plural, on tone. Or beans, or whatever. Right, you know on tone? Yeah. I really mean I love these. It's a plural, though. And here's the yeah. plural. It's a plural. Okay. That's why they're saying everything. Well, you seem to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, I should. I should. Mean. Yeah, okay. So it is being in the plural. Uh -huh. There's a plural. So the nature of being as a whole. <coughs> Hmm. Oh. So it, it's a it's a plural, but but, but um, as a whole is a singular, you know. Yeah. So that you've got to so keep that in mind that it's not. Second, second it's like he's looking at things with a holistic vision or trying seeking a holistic. Let me let me put some meat on these bones for a moment, all right? Um, would you agree that you're all familiar with this beautiful diagram? How do you know it's beautiful? Because you've seen it so many times. Is this some part of it? That's right. Oh, the great ocean of beauty. Right, the great no. ocean of beauty. That experience is an experience of being. No. Right. I do. No. That's an experience of being. So, everywhere seeking the true nature of being as a whole. Mm. Yeah. Right. <coughs> the experience of beauty is toan. It's, it's, that's what it is. Once you get up there, it, it, is, it is that singular. And that is the singular, right? That great ocean of beauty, that one true knowledge. For the sake of which everything is Right? So, here he has a knowledge. Here it is. That's, that's, this, that's this. This is going to be, this is going to be explained. This is explained. Right. In other words, that's the goal. How do you get there? Why? Do that again. What do you mean by this? Very good. What? This is what he wants to know about. Hmm. Hey, what do you mean by that? And that's what we want to know, don't we? Right, what are you talking about? That's true. She really does know. She gets tired. 
every fourth week. <laughs> <laughs> she does. You guys just every you know. fourth week. <laughs> She's faking. <laughs> okay. So I take the case of Haley, Theodorus. While he was studying the stars and looking upward, he fell into a pit. A neat, witty, Thracian servant girl jeered at him. They say, because he was so eager to know the things in the sky that he could not see what was there before him at his very feet. The same jest applies to all who pass their lives in philosophy. For really, such a man pays no attention to his next door neighbor. He is not only ignorant of what he is doing, but he hardly knows whether he is a human being or some other kind of a creature. <coughs> but what a human being is, and what is proper for such a nature, to do or bear, different from any other, this he inquires and exerts himself to find out. Do you understand, Theodorus, or not? This is this is Greek spelling. In case some of you want to know. It's a why it's a Greek spelling? <laughs> That's a Greek spelling. That's a cabaret. Okay, all right. What does he mean? What does he mean? What's the question he asks? What a human being is. <coughs> what is proper? Or such a nature to do or bear, different from any other. That's a word for experience for that's Pascal and that experience suffer undergo. She's got a big piece of chocolate. It's a great. Oh. Now look, let me ask you this. How are, how are these related? How are these related? between the two dialogues is one of the curious parts of it. Uh, what you have to ask is what man is and what is proper for him to do and to bear different from anything else or anybody else. Yes. What, what's that? This one? No? <laughs> oh, that's a bigger one. I agree with you. Go for the bigger. Bigger is better. <laughs> <laughs> In a symposium, the significance really oh, have this no, no. It's only the mind that can say this. It's only the mind that can say this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 
Yeah. It's only it's only the mind. Oh, Nothing. Else to do. Therefore, only those that have a mind. That's its proper object. That's its proper object. And once it is seen, then something is born. Virtue. Virtue. Right. And therefore, it then has to be nurtured and brought up. Right. So they go together. Proper to do and to bear as distinct as any other nature. Right. So. And if you do that, what do you get? This is what you get. Because that's the same thing as this experience. That's the same as this. Hmm. Oh. In terms of the supposed man to say, what a man is, a lover of the good and beautiful man. Well, it, it isn't just that. Um, I didn't have it. I thought I had a Roush, but it, uh, there's a Roush right there under David. Good, thank you. <coughs> and he would definitely be a friend of the gods. If any man could be. Do you not reflect that there only it will be possible for him no. when he sees the beautiful with the mind, which alone can see it, therefore it's the distinctive property of the mind, and therefore it's mine. To give birth not to likeness of virtue since he touches no likeness, but reality since he touches reality. And when he has given birth to real virtue and brought it up, will he not be granted to be a friend of God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it? Let me see. Is that right? She's asking about a chemical analysis of that. Came to the right person. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Good. 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 Um, next paragraph. Where you at, Jim? I was just reflecting on what, how that would compare with the preceding sentence. Compared to the rhetorician, he's taking a particular person and trying to help him and, and t taking particular points and points at issue. Here, there's a very, it's, no. it's what's the nature of man in general and, and what, is, what is this proper, mm -hmm. uh, proper for him as a whole. So, this little pair, this little. This question represents what it is that this question. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. The consequences so far are in themselves. Uh, pure in themselves. Okay. Next paragraph. You mean with respect to each group? When you say, what do you mean by in themselves? Consequences. Well, was this description, did this description have anything to do with rhetorician and oh, the world? Okay. Right, okay. Right. Hence it is my friend. Oh, Theodore's? Do you understand Theodore's or not? Yes, I do. 
You are right. Hence it is, my friend, such a man, both private, when he meets with individuals, and in public, as I said in the beginning, when he is obliged to speak in court or elsewhere about the things at his feet and before his eyes, is a laughing stop, not only to Thracian girls, but to the multitude in general, for he falls into pits and all sorts of perplexities through inexperience, and his awkwardness is terrible, making him seem a fool. For when it comes to abusing people, he has no personal abuse to offer against anyone, because he knows no evil of any man, never have cared, never having cared for such things. So his perplexity makes him appear ridiculous. And as to laudatory speeches and the boasting of others, it becomes manifest that he is laughing at them, not pretending to laugh, but really laughing. And so he is thought to be a fool. When he hears a panegyric, panegyric of a despot or a king, he fancies he is listening to the praises of some herdsman, a swineherd, a shepherd, or a meat herd, for instance, who gets much milk from his feet. But he thinks that the ruler tends and milks a more perverse and treacherous creature than the herdsman, and that he must grow coarse and uncivilized, no less than they. For he has no leisure and lives surrounded by a wall as the herdsmen live in their mountain pens. Oh, wait a second. I'm going to read that again. But he thinks that the ruler tends and milks a more perverse and treacherous creature than the herdsman, and that he must grow coarse and uncivilized, no less than they. For he has no leisure and lives surrounded by a wall, as the herdsmen live in their mountain pens. And when he hears that someone is amazingly rich because he owns 10,000 acres of land or more, to him, accustomed as he is to think of the whole earth, this seems very little. And when people sing the praises of lineage and say someone is of noble birth because he can show seven wealthy ancestors, he thinks that such praises betray an altogether dull and narrow vision on the part of those who utter them. Because of lack of education, they cannot keep their eyes fixed upon the whole and are unable to calculate that every man has had countless lives, thousands of ancestors and progenitors, among whom have been in any instance rich and poor, kings and slaves, barbarians and Greeks. And when people pride themselves on a list of 25 ancestors and trace their pedigree back to Hercules, the son of Amphitiron, the pettiness of their ideas seem absurd to him. He laughs at them because they cannot free their silly minds of vanity by calculating that Amphitiron's 25th ancestor was such as fortunate as fortune happened to make him, and the 50th for that matter. In all these cases, the philosopher is derided by the common herd, partly because he seems to be contemptuous partly because he is ignorant of common things and is always in perplexity. Okay. Now the next category. Just as you say, Socrates. But when, my friend, he draws a man upwards, and the other is willing to rise with him, above the level of what wrong have I done you or you me, to the investigation of abstract right and wrong, to inquire what each of them is, and wherein they differ from each other and from all other things, or above the level of is a king happy? Or, on the other hand, has he great wealth to the investigation of royalty and of human happiness and wretchedness in general to see what the nature of each is and in what way man is naturally fitted to gain the one and escape the other. When that man of small and sharp and pedophagy mind is compelled in his turn to give an account of all these things, then the tables are turned dizzied by the new experience of hanging at such a height, he gazes downward from the air in dismay and perplexity. He stammers and becomes ridiculous, 
not in the eyes of the Thracian girls or other uneducated persons, for they have no perception of it, but in those of all men who have been brought up as free men, not as slaves. Such is the character of each of the two classes, Theodore. Okay. okay, here he switches. Now, when the rhetorician is in the philosopher's camp, all right, that's this section, all right, that's at 175C. <laughs> then we get the questions that are central to Buddhism and philosophy going on the power there. Right. Yeah. When you have to reason about the nature of righteousness and what's no. unrighteous, how they differ from one and another and from anything else. Right. And deal with the whole question of human happiness and suffering, misery. Right. Mm -hmm. What their nature is, how humanity can gain one and escape the other, those are one. Buddhism and philosophy in one paragraph. the uh, other part last time, didn't we? But there's a nice Dad. order to it, isn't it? Dad. Very, Very systematic. Did we finish that turn mm -hmm. I didn't think we finished that paragraph. Didn't we? No, it, it has a beautiful type mm -hmm. of rhythm to it, and I just felt incomplete. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Such is the character of each of the classes, Theodoric, of the man who has, been truly, who has truly been brought up in freedom and leisure, whom you call a philosopher, who may without censor appear foolish and good for nothing when he is involved in menial services, if, for instance, he does not know how to pack up his bedding, much less to put the proper sweetening into a sauce or a fawning speech, and of the other, who can perform all such no. services mm -hmm. smartly and quickly, but does not know how to wear his cloak as a free man should, properly draped, still less to acquire the true harmony of speech and him a right the, and him a right the praises of the true life of God and blessed men. All right, so he goes back. He goes back to the beginning. In this paragraph, does it not? He returns yeah. to the beginning, picks up the same things. The Three, those are the two themes. <coughs> the two types. Rhetorician alone, philosophy alone. Then he moves from these contrasts between philosophy and rhetoric and takes the, the, the metaphysical jump. Right? Now he enters into the metaphysical. So these are the two patterns. Right? These are the two characters. <coughs> Such are the two characters, the daughters, the philosophy and the revolution. Now he moves now. There are two, two patterns. Right. So he's going from the particular to the general, just like he says we ought to. That's right. He's doing it. He's doing it for us. Right. The only psychology that philosophy really touches on is this puzzle. Pardon me, sir? The psychology of philosopher that he, that he touches on is his puzzle. That's the, the focus of, his, uh, of the psychology, whereas the other is the, uh, the bitterness and the running into silence. Shrewdness, cleverness. There seems to be a, a, a number of things in the rhetoric of the philosopher. It's probably more principal. In the psychology, the last part of what he said. Puzzling. 
Uh, I can't hear the last part of your question. No. Do you want to say it or do you want someone to guess at it? I'm no, no. No, what I was saying is that. I mean, are you after ignoring it? No, 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 no. The aspect of the philosophy no. of the psychology mm -hmm. that he touched on the philosophy of the contrast, which are multiple no. things that he deals with the rhetorician. No. The, only, the only psychological aspect that he, that he really that he really touches on is puzzlement. That's it. That's all he that's all he deals with there. No. Though they don't have any place in the realm of the divine. But they linger in our world and so haunt this region and infect our mortal nature. But how did your translation look? Okay, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jane, are you still doing? Soft? Okay. Still less to acquire the true harmony of truth? But it is impossible. But it is impossible that evil should be done away with, Theodorus. <coughs> For there must always be something opposed to the good, and they cannot have their place among the gods, but must inevitably hover about mortal nature and this earth. Therefore, we ought to try to escape from earth to the dwelling of the gods as quickly as we can, and to escape is to become like God, so far as this is possible. And to become like God is to become righteous and holy and wise. But indeed, my good friend, it is not at all easy to persuade people that the reason generally advanced for the pursuit of virtue and the avoidance of vice, namely, in order that a man may not seem bad and may seem good, is not the reason why the one should be practiced and the other not. Not, I think, is merely old wise chatter, as the saying is. That is, I, that I think, is merely old wise chatter, as the saying is. Let us get the true reason. God is in no wise and in no manner right and righteous, but utterly and perfectly righteous, and there is nothing so like Him as that one of us who in turn becomes most nearly perfect in righteousness. It is herein that the true cleverness of a man is found, and also his worthlessness and cowardice. For the knowledge of this is wisdom, or true virtue, and ignorance of it is folly, or manifest wickedness. And all the other kinds of seeming cleverness and wisdom are paltry when they appear in public affairs and vulgar in the arts. Therefore, by far, the best thing for the unrighteous man and the man whose words or deeds are impious is not to grant that he is clever to knavery, for such men glory in that reproach and think it means that they are not triflers, useless burdens upon the earth, but such as men should be who are to live safely in a state. So we must tell them the truth, 
that just because they do not think they are such as they are, they are so all the more truly. For they do not know the penalty of unrighteousness, which is the thing they most ought to know. For it is not what they think it is, scourings and death, which they sometimes escape entirely when they have done wrong, but a penalty which it is impossible to escape. What penalty do you mean? Two patterns, my friend, are set up in the world, the divine, which is most blessed, and the godless, which is most wretched. But these men do not see that this is the case, and their silliness and extreme foolishness blind them to the fact that through their unrighteous acts they are made like the one and unlike the other. They therefore pay the penalty for this by living up the pattern they resemble. And if we tell them that, unless they depart from their cleverness, the blessed place that is pure of all things evil will not receive them after death. And here on earth they will always live in the life like themselves, evil men associating with evil. When they hear this, they will be so confident in their unscrupulous cleverness that they will think our words the talk of fools. Very true, Socrates. Yes, my friend, I know. Yep. So, if the uh, importance, the whole importance of this section, right? become righteous as possible. And how do you do that? With the help of wisdom. Back to the question we had before, we can put this section in the section on knowledge, can we? Clear. To know this, to have knowledge of this, that's. That's it. Again, does that fit into the Jesus' concept of knowledge? Obviously not. <coughs> no. Mm -hmm. It certainly has a uh, kind of a sonata form, doesn't it? It's not there yeah. for the mass development of the whole thing. Masterful thing. shot at this before we left it. Now, here they clever as men in a good sense, isn't it? Because it's a true cleverness of a man. True cleverness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we say clever, we say tricky, like on 129. What number? Yeah. It is here in that the true cleverness of a man is found and also is It is here that a man shows his true spirit and power or lack of spirit and nothing more. Yeah,
Yeah, well, one would regard that as being funny. You say the lack of spirit and nothingness is that worthless and cowardice. That's the only reason I knew that cleverness must be good here, because of the way it was contrasted with a couple of words that I felt had to be negative. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Say, July 4th, there's a party, mm -hmm. Nancy Flynn's, a swimming party, and maybe a barbecue thrown in after the great celebration of July 4th in Huntington Beach, so take in the parade, and after that, you know where to congregate? Take a beer. Right. Oh, Nancy right. Flynn. <laughs> so, can we bring, bring some beer, can Nancy? Can we bring something? Yeah, you can bring bring the stuff that you want to drink. Sure. How about some can we bring or buns? Like or or you can, you can also bring vegetarian hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Are those those soybean things? Yeah. No, <laughs> they, <laughs> they serve those at beef. They serve can those at Bob's. Thank you. Yeah. You just tell them, okay. tell a vegetarian and tell a vegetarian. They do. Each of, you know, each of them. Oh, I thought it was a joke. Okay. It is. Oh, okay. You just yeah. tell a vegetarian they're vegetarian. Okay, if I bring two oh. Never. It sure is. Bring one. Bring one. What is it that you'd like yeah. us to bring? I guess there's some people. Just bring something to drink, you know, if you're going to have beer or wine or something like that. Thank you. Well, I'm going to bring my ears to it. There isn't, there isn't going to be anything left of that shop. Who bought your chocolate? Your husband's going to suffer. I think you better save some pieces. What are the cats doing? They're What's your address? Oh, it's 92011. Right across from Lake Park. Mm -hmm. Is it going to go on after 7 or so? Mm, I don't know. I thought we need around 4 or 5. If there's any cars. I get off at 7. If there's any bodies laying around. So, one word. Look here. What he does is that stuff. He says there's a that you're influenced, you're influenced by the pattern that you follow. So we make distinctions between the philosopher and the rhetorician. He's saying, look here, above them both is a more fundamental twin pattern. And that really accounts for the appearance below. Hmm. Hmm. <coughs> when he goes into that next paragraph, when he moves it to the moves it up. Oh, below is it? Yeah. Yeah, below is the specific. So you could say that the presuppositions for this presupposes something, and that's the metaphysics. And that's the section we just did, those two patterns. So it proposes wisdom and ignorance. Yeah. And it says, that's different from the Christian or the religious viewpoint. Oh, the devil has to be in. There's Satan. no satanic. Right. There's no satanic. It's aspect. wisdom and Demon. the lack of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the uh, <coughs> evil, they, they use the word bad, by the way, they don't use the word evil. Uh, it lingers in this world. It's not part of the realm of reality. But is this is one of these patterns in the realm of reality? Lack of it's it's, it's lack. lack. It's not a pattern. It's lack of it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It couldn't be a pattern though. It's lack of a pattern. Is lack of a pattern a pattern? In this world, it is. Yeah, in this world, it is. Mm -hmm. Because that's how it would have to seem real. Mm -hmm. Chris, it's not real because he can get out of it anytime he wants. All he has to do is decide to change. It doesn't have any impact beyond the, the will. It's like the family game. Yeah, like the family game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Gina tells me tonight that she made, and Barbara made, some special coffee. Yeah. 
Therefore, Special. someone should say what time it is now. What time? 9.20. 9.20? Yeah. 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 We started early. Oh, okay. Huh? Come on. Say time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.